I've only gardened for about 15 years and before then I had no interest in plants. It just happened to me one day that I became interested and although I grew up with a family who had a vegetable garden and that homesteading environment, I had moved away from that to the opposite end of that spectrum. But that exposure was still with me and I started connecting the dots and I started thinking about the garden and what they grew and harvesting things when I was a kid and then I used books and gardening television and gardening YouTube and I educated myself and I educated myself also through trial and error because I have had many failures. I've done lots of things that resulted in nothing and some things that were quite the epiphany and it's gotten me to a point today where I'm a huge advocate for organic gardening, for protecting the soil, mulching, and also for growing lots of different types of plants all together. And to realize the merits and the possibilities that each plant can give us. My allotment garden is on the Isle of Man, a little island in between England and Ireland and Scotland and Wales, right in the middle of the Irish Sea. And we have the Gulf Stream going around us. So even though we're quite far north when you're looking at our latitude, it stays relatively warm. So we have mild summers and mild winters. The plot itself is 30 by 40 foot, not big by any standards probably about the same size as most people's vegetable garden. And it's on a slope. It's a sunny slope, but it's a slope nonetheless. And so there are challenges with growing on a slope. And the main one is erosion. And I try to mitigate that by using organic principles, including mulch. I use either homemade compost or aged manure, and I spread it on the soil. I try to use no dig principles, but I'm not 100% no dig. I dig when it makes sense to me. The soil though, if we leave it here completely exposed, it washes down the slope. And I know this because my very first plot here was further down the field and the topsoil down there is much deeper than it is up here. And so I use mulch I have created beds and pathways to try to keep the soil in the beds, but I also use a system of polyculture, which involves the use of lots and lots and lots of different plants, including perennials and annuals, to make sure that the soil stays where it needs to be. As long as you have plants growing in the soil, their roots are hanging onto it and keeping it there. But the moment you uproot plants and you leave the soil exposed to the elements, it will wash away, it will blow away. And this is one of the biggest challenges with modern agriculture and gardening. And keeping our soil on the land rather than wash down to the sea, which is where our soil will go, it's right over there. That is a huge challenge because if we don't have topsoil, we can't grow food for the future. Although my plot here is relatively small, I probably have hundreds of plants growing here. And some of the most important are perennials. And perennials are plants that you plant once and then you can harvest crops from or gather flowers from and foliage for years and years to come. And their role in my garden is to make it low maintenance and to have a consistent and reliable yield, but also to hold on to the soil. On all sides of my plot, I've got perennials, but I also have perennials dotted right throughout the garden. And then around them, I plant annual vegetables, I plant annual flowers, a really big mix. I grew pretty much everything that the temperate vegetable gardener would grow, but I also grow a lot of medicinal herbs. I'm a soap maker, so I grow skincare plants and plants that I can use in my handmade soaps. And I also use companion planting as a tactic. 
We on the Isle of Man are probably blessed in some people's eyes in that we don't have a lot of the wildlife that you would find in the UK or you would find in North America. We don't have deer, we don't have moles, badgers, snakes. We do have insects that can be difficult. We've got cabbage white butterflies, we have sawfly, which I've had on this gooseberry here. And so to mitigate insect pests and also some birds, I use various tactics. I do use some netting to keep certain types of animals off certain types of plants. But by planting, say, this gooseberry here and also gooseberry on the other side of my plot, I'm mitigating issues that might arise. So for example, this gooseberry has for years suffered from sawfly and it strips the leaves and leaves it skeletal looking towards the middle of summer. The gooseberry on the other side of the plot has not had sawfly and it's that distance between the plants that has probably saved it. If we were right next door, the sawfly would have just moved right over and spread like a fire. So by separating them, I'm basically hedging my bets for a harvest. Now with companion planting, let's go back to this gooseberry here. This is the first year that it has kept its foliage in a while. I had strawberries move in from my strawberry bed here. They just kind of jumped the, the pathway here. And I think that it's not a coincidence that the ground was completely covered underneath with strawberries and it broke that reproduction cycle with the sawfly. And hopefully next year, we won't see any damage on this plant either. So companion planting, spacing plants out, hedging my bets, and also focusing on the wildlife aspect of gardening, I think is what helps me keep a really successful, beautiful, but low maintenance garden. I plant a lot of different flowers, both for my own enjoyment, for skin care, but also to attract insects, beneficial pollinators to come in and pollinate all of my vegetables while they're at it. And I think that that also creates a balance within the garden itself in that if I had an entire bed of cabbages, say, it would not nearly be as alive as the cabbages that I keep planted around my berry bushes. You can hear the hum of bees everywhere you go in my plot. And that is what's important in helping to keep one particular insect from decimating an entire crop. A good mix, it emulates what's going on in nature and my planting style, I think emulates what's going on in nature as well because no matter where you look, even if you clear an area, eventually you leave it, it comes back to life with plants. It's not nature's way to have bare soil. Another aspect that makes my garden, I think pretty unique is that I'm very interested in alternative uses for common plants. So everything from vegetables to weeds to ornamental flowers. So for example, carrots, we think of that as a, as a food, but the carrot tops, the greens themselves, is something you can use to naturally dye wool yellow. And the roots themselves, you can use to naturally tint handmade soap. Just incredible uses, unexpected ways to use them. So wherever I look in my garden, in my allotment garden, I see potential. And this is what I really wanted to communicate with my piece, the companion plants that we plant, not just for company. And it's also the premise of my new book, A Woman's Garden, Grow Beautiful Plants and Make Useful Things. Now, in my book, I don't refer to polyculture as such. I use a term that I think a lot more people can understand, and that is cottage garden style. And it also gives another reason for polyculture. If you don't have very much space, it's possible to grow loads and loads of plants in a smallish space. If you consider how tall they grow, their spread, if they can help one another. Last year, 
in the container at the old house, I had nasturtiums growing alongside kale and it looked great. Both of them served an edible purpose, but also the nasturtiums worked as a sacrificial crop. I had cabbage white butterflies come in and they laid a lot of their eggs on the nasturtiums, which they ravaged, but my Uncle Bert's purple kale was left alone for the most part. It survived that attack without me having to pick off caterpillars as much or to spray or do anything that isn't going to benefit the environment in the long run. So my book, and the article that I wrote and the very style of gardening that I introduce and share with people is a way to garden organically, to garden low cost, to get a great yield and to create a beautiful garden that's full of useful plants. And a woman's garden really embodies that spirit and shows lots of ways that we can use plants for alternative uses. It focuses on eight categories of useful plants, including dye plants, medicinals, so beginner medicinals, skincare plants, and much more. And it really feeds into that idea of polyculture and companion planting and doing what we can to help wildlife, to help the soil, and to get a great yield.